Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I wanted to talk about something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because it is, in fact, the, the name of my company. Not, not everybody knows, no reason you necessarily should, that my company is called Genius Catalyst Incorporated. And, and that name, Genius Catalyst, came about, gosh, more than a decade ago when I, I was looking for what is the essence of what we do. What's the essence of the impact that we have and aim to have in the world? And it is sparking people's innate genius. Now, that's not the high IQ kind of genius. So, so high IQ genius, most people, you know, imagine somebody very skinny with glasses, you know, male or female, right? And, and, and there's sort of this almost mad scientist kind of association and social awkwardness. And, and, and the kind of genius I'm talking about is nothing to do with IQ. It, it's a kind of an innate, unlearned genius. So w- one of the definitions of, of, of genius is an attendant spirit of a person or place, a strong leaning or inclination, or a peculiar, distinctive, or identifying character or spirit. In other words... Your genius is your spirit. It is your own sense of direction, of leaning or inclination. It is that peculiar something that makes you, you, but also more than you, if that makes any sense at all. And I, I remember the way that I, I, I first thought of it. I was quite young, I, I was 16 maybe, and I was doing summer stock. And when we were doing these workshops on, on expressing our creativity, and I, I wrote on the cover of my, my notebook for that class, embrace your personal weirdness. And I, there was something about that that spoke to what I mean when I'm talking about genius. And, and I remember the, the teacher came around and she saw that and said, well, no, 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 you shouldn't say weirdness because that's judgmental. You should say uh, uh, embrace your personal uniqueness. And so I crossed it out and wrote it in, but it killed it. Because the way genius expresses through us is the way genius expresses through us. The nature of genius is the same So it will come out as your personal weirdness through you and my personal weirdness through me, but it it, it is not unique or weird. It is universal. And so I call this the five hashtags of innate genius because there's a running joke at Genius Catalyst, which is anytime any of us works something out that's outside of our normal sphere of expertise, so anytime I do anything remotely practical, (laughs) for example... We're, you know, the, the, we're rewarded with the saying, hashtag genius is infinite. And, and that's the first hashtag. Genius is infinite. So for, for years, and you may have heard of this concept, I worked with this idea of that we have zones of genius. And, and the idea behind it m- makes total sense. We have certain things that come so easily to us that we don't even recognize them as genius in action. And, and, and so we, we sort of think, well, anyone can do that or that's no big deal because it's so effortless for us that we don't recognize the value of it. There, there's a, a quote that's attributed to Einstein and, and it's, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it's stupid. And, and the goal in that work, playing with zones of genius, was you would identify those things that are in your zone of genius and then work towards spending the majority of your time doing them. And then you would gradually outsource or just abandon everything else to be taken care of by other people or, or left behind as you focused more and more on your zone of genius. And people really liked that. I really liked that. It was tangible. It felt, it felt like, oh, okay, I can do that. But for me, I started to see that it shrunk my world. So... It, 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 just a totally practical example for me, DIY projects, clearly my zone of incompetence, like not something that I was interested in, not something I was any good at. But I remember one day 
my my daughter really wanted a blind hung in her bathroom, and there was no one around who could do it. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll do it. And it was so fun, and I learned so much about how things work, having to figure it out. And, and then I remembered, God, I actually rebuilt this huge stone wall in my parents' driveway as a kid. And, and it was one of the most satisfying things I ever did. And I realized, oh, that's the same feeling I get when, when I, I, I craft a, a sentence for a blog post. That's the same feeling I get when I write a new book. That's the same feeling I get doing one of these podcasts. It isn't the project. It isn't whether or not it's my zone of genius. It's how I show up to it. So if you have a lack of love for something, a lack of creativity around something, an apparent lack of facility around something, it probably looks like it's something to do with that thing. Well, I'm just not good at blank. But if you bring love and creativity to blank, your genius begins to emerge. And in a remarkably short time, there's a previously untapped facility that begins to develop it. And, and, and the more I've looked at it over the years, the more it seems to me that genius is infinite. We create limitation through our belief in imaginary zoning laws. And, and that points to the second hashtag, which is hashtag genius is impersonal. So in a, in, in a social economy, genius is a commodity. So to say it's impersonal seems subversive or dismissive, but the point isn't that your individual unique expression of genius is impersonal. It's that genius itself is impersonal. It's available to everyone, regardless of social class, regardless of IQ, regardless of education, regardless of what you've accomplished or not accomplished to this moment. You and I have the same access to creative intelligence that allowed Mozart to compose his first symphony at the age of eight. We have access to the same creative intelligence that allowed Einstein to publish his theory of special relativity at the age of 26. In fact, we're made of it. The same intelligence you see in your body, maintaining stasis, allowing you to function in, in a wide variety of environments, is functioning in your mind as well. Like gravity, ever-present, knowable by its effect, but invisible to the eye. Genius is, is seen most easily in the moments where we think we're in over our heads. So you get in over your head and, and suddenly, whether it's just gradual ideas or a sudden flash of insight, you know what to do. And you begin moving forward. And, and, and you get more curious, and it feels easier. Now, one of the places where I see this is playing video games. I don't know if you're a gamer, and I'm not a proper gamer, but I love playing adventure games. I love playing games like Mario and Zelda and Call of Duty. and I, I don't even mind what the adventure is, but something where there is a continual series of fresh obstacles, and you have to continually find your way around. And there is some physical skill, but a lot of it is insight-based. A lot of it is something occurs to you and you suddenly figure out how to beat a level. That is that impersonal nature of genius in action. That is the responsive nature of genius. And that's our third hashtag. Hashtag genius is responsive. So there's a quote I've always loved from a book called A Rich Man's Secret by Ken Roberts. And he said, take the first step, no more, no less, and the next will be revealed. And what I've found, and everyone I've worked with finds in their own ways, is that the moment you fully engage your mind on a problem, a challenge, or a goal, you begin to get new thinking, you get fresh ideas, and you start to notice previously unseen possibilities. And I am sure you have examples of that in your own life. You have times where you found yourself in a situation that seemed beyond your capacity, whether in a video game or in real life, and then you were surprised and delighted when you figured it out, when something new came to mind. And that's probably why you love doing those things. You love those experiences. Most people love the experiences of having that fresh, responsive intelligence, that real-time, oh, I know what to do, that comes through. And 
And because of that, it seems odd. We don't spend more time willingly throwing ourselves in over our heads. Now, in part two of this podcast, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a couple more hashtags and, 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 and I'm going to share why it is that we don't rely on this reliable, impersonal, infinite intelligence, this reliable, impersonal, infinite genius more of the time. Have fun, learn heaps, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>